Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Today I want to share my current favorite art supplies with you and show you how I use them. Let's start with paper. I'm currently using two sketchbooks. This first one is a moleskin sketchbook in the large size, which is roughly A5 size. The paper is a warm, creamy white and wonderful to draw on with pencil and ink. I use mainly ink on this paper and it's not too great at handling lots of water or doing many layers of watercolor on it as it's not made for that purpose, but ink and pencil look really nice on it and you can even do a light wash of watercolor like this. I love how sturdy this book is and the paper is quite thick enough to handle quite a bit of abuse. The second sketchbook is a craft paper sketchbook made by Hanemühle. I bought this to practice using markers, which is a medium that I'm very new to. I love the fact that white highlights will stand out really nicely on this paper and that you can achieve really cool 3D effects on it as well. I also really, really like how the warm brown of the paper will always shine through everything and tie the colors of the grey tones together quite nicely. This book is a ring bound one and I only use one side of each page, page as I'm using alcohol based markers and they do shine through the paper quite a bit. I think that the surface of the craft paper is actually not the best for markers as it is somewhat rough and will probably damage the marker tips after a little while, but I just really love the combination of grain markers and craft paper, so I guess I'll just have to live with it for now. As for watercolor paper, I really like the Kensen paper. I currently use this 224 GSM mixed media paper, which I bought in this spiral bound book. The pages are 17.7 by 25.4 centimeters big and the paper is really nice for watercolor paintings that are not too wet. And these are examples of watercolor illustrations that I did on that 224 GSM paper. For paintings where I know I'll be using lots of water and do lots of wet and wet painting, I will use this wonderful Kensen Montval paper, which is 300 GSM. The sheets are 19 by 24 centimeters, which is not too big because I usually do fairly small paintings anyways. And this is actually a paper block, which also helps with the paper not warping too much when you use water on it. And these are examples of paintings I did on this wonderful Montval paper. I don't really sketch in pencil all that often, but I use pencil for first outlines of anything that I want to draw. This is one of the rare pages in my sketchbook where I use pencil only. I usually use a mechanical pencil for this, as it gives me a nice, reliable, clean line. I love this Faber-Castell Grip 1345 pencil which uses 0.5 tip lead. You can buy replacements for the eraser and the eraser pops out like this when you twist this part of the barrel. I usually use a simple eraser that I buy from Muji to erase my pencil outlines when I'm done inking them, but if I need something more precise I will either use the eraser that is attached to my mechanical pencil or I use this really cool precision eraser this is the Faber-Castell Perfection 7058, which is a nice precision eraser that you can simply sharpen with a regular pencil sharpener. And that's a cool and relatively cheap option for a precision eraser there. For inking, I usually use pigment ink fine liners. They come in different tip sizes and give you a really nice, clean, reliable line. I use and like the Sakura Micron Pigma liners, the Edding 1800 Profi pens, and the Stedler pigment liners. There's more brands out there that produce pigment liners similar to this, but I haven't tried them, so I can't really review them. For more variable line, I really love using fountain pen, because with this you can just change the angle and the pressure with which you sketch, in that way you can really vary the width of your line very easily. I use the Lamy Safari fountain pens. These are really not too expensive but great quality. I have an EF which is extra fine nib in this one. 
and the F which is fine nib in this one. There are two options for ink refills. You can either use an ink cartridge like this or you can get a converter that you can fill with any bottled ink that you like. I love the black Lamy ink cartridges because the ink is quite nice, flows really well and is not too expensive. It's water soluble so you can achieve nice effects like this by sketching in black ink and then just adding water using a brush to dilute the ink. This is another spread that I did solely in the black Lamy ink. There is a little bit of dash, a dash of red here. That that's not Lamy ink, but the rest is just Lamy ink, done in a fountain pen and then diluted with water and a brush. And if I want to add a non-water soluble outline to anything, for example, for my watercolor paintings, I will use waterproof inks. Now. Most waterproof inks are not made for the use in fountain pen because the pigments are too large and will clog up the feed of the pen. But I found this wonderful Detrimentis Black Document ink which is waterproof and made for the use in fountain pens. The pigments are ground up very, very f to very, very fine particles so it won't clog your pen. It flows really nicely and if you clean your pen every couple of weeks then it works really well in my fountain pens and I haven't had any problems at all. Once it's dry it's completely waterproof so you could do watercolor over the ink outline for example. For larger areas or to achieve bleed effects, to dilute the ink to various grey shades and to paint with the ink, I use bottled India ink and brushes. I really like this Winsor & Newton India ink. This is their black drawing ink. And then I have two red colors because I really like to add red, a dash of red to my black and white drawings. This is the crimson and the deep red drawing inks. And all of these are waterproof once dry. I filled my black inks into these small Nalgene bottles so it's easier to transport them safely when I don't want to bring glass bottles. This is the black Winsor & Newton one and this is the Detrimentis Black Document ink. I like to add white highlights to some of my sketches and for this I use white Uniball Signal gel pens. I don't use that too much on white paper as I would rather use the white of the paper as highlights because that looks just more natural and ties the painting together a little more nicely. This, for example, all the white parts that you see is just the white of the paper. I only added black ink to this spread. But I really like to use these pens on craft paper because that just really pops out on this sepia tone of the paper. I use this palette and these little containers for my ink when I'm inking. Um, I will usually just fill a little bit of ink into the container and dip my brush or nib into it. And if I want to dilute the ink and create various shades of grey, I'll just do it on this palette. So I usually use this palette if I want various different shades of ink, like I did with this painting. There's various different shades of grey in here. And if I just want a red and a black ink to dip my pen into, or my brush into, I'll use one of these containers. And these are plastic and they stack up like that and they have a little lid, so they're super easy to transport as well. Mind you though, this is not spill proof, so you could never fill ink in this and then transport it safely. This is just to store the cups when they're empty. If you want to take your ink with you and you don't want to bring glass bottles, then I, as I said, recommend you take these Nalgene bottles because these are definitely spill proof. I've recently gotten into using markers and though I'm still definitely a beginner and have just started practicing with them, I really like how they look, especially on craft paper. I have some grey shades made by Faber-Castell. This is what they look like. They're nice and slim and light so they're easy to take with you when you're on the go. They have nice fine brush tips that are a little bit flexible but not too flexible and they 
Because they come to a very fine point, they're super nice for detail work. And I also really love the Winsor Newton brush markers, which are alcohol-based markers. The Faber-Castell ones are water-based pigment ink markers, and these are alcohol-based pigment ink markers. These are my favorite thing to use in the craft paper sketchbook, and they have a nice, very flexible brush tip that's really nice for varying your line width and for doing detail work. And then they have this chisel tip, which is great for covering larger areas. These are a little bit bigger, so I guess they're not too great to take on the go. I own a black and various warm and cool gray markers, and I really, really love using these. The only downside to these is that they're not refillable, or at least I don't believe that the companies currently offer refill inks. So once they're done, you have to just throw them out and buy a new marker, which I find quite wasteful. It's quite expensive, and, and you're just it's just a lot of garbage, uh, plastic garbage that you're throwing away. So that's the only downside to these. As for watercolors, I really, really like the Schmincke Horadam watercolors. This is my favorite medium to work with by far, and I think learning how to use watercolor really helps to get better at looking at your subject first and then painting quite consciously. Because watercolor is, in a way, a really unforgiving medium. Covering up mistakes is not really that easy, so you have to be a little careful and plan ahead. I use this Schmincke watercolor set, which I originally bought as a 12 pen Academy set. You have a nice mixing area here. And it used to have another fold-out mixing area here, which I'm not using right now because I usually take this when I'm on the go and I want it to be really nice and compact. So this actually came with 12 Academy colors. Academy is Schmincke's student grade line. And if you're just getting started with watercolors, I think that's a fantastic option. I have since refilled the pens using tube colors like this which will, these will refill a half pen, which is this, this smaller size, about three to four times. The colors that I use most often, especially as a base for mixing various other shades, are in full pens and everything else is in half pens. I have 16 colors in here at the moment, which I find to be quite sufficient. To fit more pens in here, I just removed the metal tray that this came with that held the colors. And I just used a little bit of blue tack to attach the pens directly to the palette like this. That holds them nice and securely. And that way you can fit more than 12 colors in this tiny, very portable, very light and robust watercolor set. And I will leave a list of the colors that I use at the moment in the info box. Please tell me if you would like to see a more in-depth video on how I created this palette and how I mix colors using these 16 shades and I will gladly film that for you. I use a spray bottle like this small one that I got at Muji to wet the paints and sort of activate them a little bit before painting. And I usually also wet the mixing area to kind of make it easier to start mixing. And then to clean my brushes and dab away any, any, any excess water, I use this cloth. I use this cloth instead of paper towels or tissues because once this is dirty, you can just rinse it out and let it dry and use it over and over again. One of my favorite tools for watercolor paintings, and by the way, also ink paintings, is masking fluid. This is Schmincke masking fluid. This is actually just liquid latex, and once it's dry, it's water repellent and will protect all areas that you apply it to. That way you can paint over it, and once everything is dry, you can just rub out the masking fluid. And that's what I use to create these stars in this painting, for example. I have quite the assortment of brushes because I seem to be a little bit addicted to buying them. Uh, here are some of my favorites. These are Rico Design Art School brushes in the sizes 3, 5 and 8. They come to a really nice point and give you a very reliable and clean line. These are my go-to brushes for most watercolor paintings. Here is an example of a painting that I did with these three brushes. 
I use a Chinese brush for bigger washes of watercolor. For example, I used it for the darker colors in these galaxy paintings. If I use liquid India ink, I usually use a nice soft watercolor brush like these ones. These are Rico Design Fine Art brushes in the sizes 0, 1 and 2. These come to a super fine point when they are wet and they pull up lots of ink, so they are fantastic for inking. This is an example of something that I did in liquid India ink using these brushes. I use flat brushes like these ones, which are Rico Design Art School brushes in the sizes 8 and 14 to cover larger areas. And this is what I use for the black backgrounds in my sketchbooks, for example. I use a fairly sturdy brush to apply masking fluid. This one is for oil or acrylic painting. Again, it's a Rico Design Art School brush. And I use a rugged old brush like this one for spatter effects. It has nice hard bristles that I just flick like this to create a really nice cool ink spatter effect. You can also spatter masking fluid by the way. And if you spatter masking fluid onto your page, paint over that and then rub out the masking fluid once everything's dry, you have these nice star effects that I use for my galaxy paintings. When I'm on the go, I always bring my Da Vinci watercolor brushes. These are really nice quality brushes and they are not cheap, but they are amazing. They come to a super fine point and pull up quite a lot of water and pigment. I have the sizes 1 and 5. They assemble like this and once you are done, you can just push this part back up and cap them. These are so nice, I really love them and I have a little, if I ever have a little bit of spare money, I think I might buy an intermediate size, like a size 3 of them, just because I like them so much. And this is a painting for, that I did in these two, with these two brushes. I store my brushes in this cup that I bought at Ikea which is really nice to look at and that way I can see all of my brushes at a glance when I'm painting. But when I'm on the go I use this bamboo mat which was really inexpensive and it rolls up nicely and you can just add your brushes in here and roll it up and that will and that way you can transport your brushes safely. And by the way when I'm traveling I usually bring water in a small Nalgene bottle. I added a magnet to the bottom using some blue tack and that way it will stand up on my watercolor palette. You obviously have to change the water regularly because it's not that much water, but this is a really cool way to use watercolors while traveling. If you would like to see a full video about my travel art kit, then just let me know and I will definitely film that for you. So that's it. Those are my current favorite art supplies. I hope that this video is helpful to you and it inspired you. Please share your current favorite art supplies down below so we can all enable each other to buy even more fantastic art supplies because after all that's part of the fun, isn't it? I in no way think that everything I mentioned in this video is necessary to create wonderful art or that these are the best things out there. This is just what I use right now, what I've been experimenting with, and what I love to use in the past couple of months. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video gave you some ideas and inspires you to try new art supplies and different media. Have a wonderful week, and I will be back with a new video very soon, and I will see you then. Goodbye!